Hello everyone and welcome back to another video with On Point Politics, your number one stop for all things polling and election analysis in the United States. And today we're going to be looking at something fairly interesting here. We're going to be looking at the past that each candidate has to the White House and why Donald Trump actually has more past than Kamala Harris. Make sure to hit the like button to subscribe if you want more content just like this. And so... The problem for the Kamala Harris campaign is that they're in a little bit of a deadlock, right? Biden had a very narrow victory in the last election, barely winning Wisconsin, Georgia, and Arizona. By the skin of his teeth, he won them by. And the problem is, in the crosstabs, Donald Trump is basically in the mid-40s with Hispanics. I mean, or at least in the low 40s. Even if he's getting 40% of Hispanics, he's already winning Arizona and Georgia basically right out the gate he's already winning Arizona and Georgia and he's doing pretty decent in Arizona and Wisconsin and Pennsylvania get slightly closer albeit with African Americans you already see a little bit of a shift you see Harris polling in the mid 80s and Trump's been polling on average at about 15 percent maybe a little bit lower than that but that's like a decent ballpark of where he's been polling at and that already gives Donald Trump a lead in the electoral college that already gives him a lead of 291 electoral votes and that's not even accounting for his overperformance more than likely with non-college whites and possibly gaining with white college grads as well like i just can't see kamala harris gaining with non-college voters it's possible she gains with college grads like in some scenario but even in the likelier scenario she probably does lose support with that group as well. And so more than likely, guys, Donald Trump's going to be the one to have multiple paths to the White House. It seems like North Carolina is a pretty strong part of the president's path. I mean, it seems like that's a pretty solid part of his path. And even looking at states like New Mexico, for example, Minnesota, New Hampshire, and Maine, I think for the sake of this video, I'm pretty sure these, as of right now, in terms of determining the pass to 270, I think it's going to be pretty much crucial that Donald Trump really isn't, you know, he probably wouldn't need any of these states to get to 270 because if he's winning one of those states, he's probably winning all the blank states on the map. The same way that if Kamala Harris is winning North Carolina, She's probably winning all the battlegrounds. Stop it with this freaking, oh, North Carolina's going to vote to the, to the, it's going to vote to the left of, of Georgia. And actually, we're going to be able to win through Michigan, Pennsylvania, and North Carolina. Like, stop it. You're not doing that. If Donald Trump loses North Carolina, he's losing all the swing states. If Donald Trump wins New Hampshire, he's also winning all of the swing states. Same thing if he's winning Virginia, he's winning pretty much all of the swing states. And possibly picks off Minnesota in the process. And probably even New Hampshire as well. Like, come on, man. Like, seriously. So, guys, I'm telling you right now, Donald Trump has the multiple pass to the White House. And I'm just going to say this. Georgia is looking good because if I haven't even touched this demographic swingometer for non-college. And she can't even win Georgia and loses it by three points. And loses Arizona. The problem is she is underperforming Joe Biden's performance with African American and Hispanic Americans in the polling data by way too much. Even if they overestimate Donald Trump in the crosstabs there a little bit like they did in 2020. But I even think still this year they may be slightly right or even underestimating him by the way. And so when you look at that process of the Sun Belt with those white working class voters and those African American and Hispanic voters turning away from Kamala Harris it just leaves her this one path and yes guys Kamala Harris really does in fact have this one path to the White House and it's through the Rust Belt I mean it is it's through the Rust Belt guys that's her one path and the problem with her one path is let's say Donald Trump does very well in Nebraska second, he ties her in the Electoral College. So funny enough, guys, this election analysis is actually really straightforward, man. This is very, very straightforward. Looking at this, Donald Trump needs to win 
one Rust Belt state in order to win the Electoral College. That's all he's got to do, guys. That is literally all he has to do. He's got to pick off Wisconsin or Michigan or Pennsylvania or even Nebraska second and tie in the Electoral College and win. That's it. That's all he's got to do. And let's say Nevada and Arizona. Let's say Trump doesn't do as good with Hispanics. Let's say there's a scenario where he doesn't do as good with Hispanics, right? But he's still holding up with African-American voters. That still gives him Georgia and North Carolina. And let's say him holding up with African-American voters gives him the Asian Pennsylvania. He's up 270 in the Electoral College. He's actually up in the state of Pennsylvania. And that would give him 270. And this is where you have Scott Presler, who's been chasing ballots like an absolute madman in the state of Pennsylvania. K- uh, kudos to him and his team. But they even flipped counties like Luzerne County, like, you know, counties that were ancestrally Democrat. They managed to flip the registration numbers there, which is insane, guys. Like, I'm telling you, that's crazy stuff in Pennsylvania. And Democrats have just eroded 300,000 votes in Pennsylvania. So, it's very possible that we get this path where Trump wins 270 through here, and then we kind of wait through for the, all the all the other states to basically be called. But guys, Donald Trump has more paths to the White House. And, you know, you'll see uh, this is something I want to debunk. I want to debunk one of Kamala Harris's paths. So all these people are saying, okay, you know, let's go ahead and give Donald Trump Georgia, North Carolina, and Nevada, right? And let's give him Wisconsin. And let's give Kamala Harris, Nebraska, second, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Arizona, which would give her 271. Here's the problem with that math. The problem with that math is that she would actually, this is what's interesting, Donald Trump would have to basically outperform, here is the problem with that, with that. Donald Trump would have to be getting, in order for this path to happen, Donald Trump would have to be getting about 13% of the black vote, give or take, maybe does decent with some of the Hispanic vote, and that actually already puts him on the top. So literally what would have to happen for this to occur, guys, just to give you guys an idea, because I don't think people realize like how crazy this actually would be. Like I don't think people realize how nuts that scenario actually is. He would literally... I'm just going to map it out for you guys so you could see how crazy this electoral college scenario actually is. I'm trying to do it right now, and it's already hard to get. I tested this earlier, and I got it, but it's like absolutely ridiculous how this would even have to happen. It's like it's like the numbers would have to be like freaking stupid for, for that path to even happen. Basically, what would have to happen is is Trump would have to do well enough with Hispanics. Like, look, I can't even do it. Kamala Harris would have to gain like 10 points with white college graduates, but Donald Trump gains four to six points with non-college whites, but he gains 18% of the African-American vote and it slightly improves with Hispanics. Like, I don't think people realize how crazy that path would actually have to be. How like stupidly crazy that path is. And I can't even do it here because he would actually pick off Pennsylvania first. So more than likely, even if this were to happen, Nevada would probably have to be going blue anyway. Because more than likely, Nevada and Arizona are probably going to vote together. So if Arizona, because the thing is Nevada is trending to the right faster than Arizona is trending to the left. And they're kind of at a crossroads this year. So my take on this is that Nevada and Arizona are actually going to vote together. So like if you see Nevada go red, more than likely Arizona is going to go red. And if you see Arizona go red, I'd actually say that there is a high probability that Nevada goes red because there is a possibility this year that Nevada and Arizona are voting with each other in the relative to the nation or they're actually Nevada's tr- voting to the right of Arizona. So if Arizona is going red, Nevada is 100 percent going red if that's the case. And the same thing the way of the other way around. If Nevada's going red, Arizona more than likely also goes Republican too. So that's the problem for Kamala Harris. Her paths are very limited because if Donald Trump just outperforms with minority voters, he's probably got all the Sunbelt states and Pennsylvania right out the gate. And if he's doing really good with 
basically non-college voters. He practically has the Rust Belt locked up and more North Carolina more than likely would go. So even if she wanted to play this Sun Belt strategy, she'd have to win all the Sun Belt states and win North Carolina. Like, if you notice, all of her paths to the White House are actually pretty unrealistic. Like, what are the chances that Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania all vote Republican, but North Carolina, Georgia, Arizona, and Nevada all vote Democrat? It just wouldn't make any sense. And the funny part is, is that according to the campaign, they're feeling good about Michigan for whatever reason. Now, they think that in Wisconsin, they're done. They basically gave up on Arizona and Nevada. They're freaking out because they had to do the no tax on tips thing. And Pennsylvania, they're getting nervous about. Now, for whatever reason, in Georgia, they think that they're fine. I don't know. They, they think they have a chance in Georgia. And what's going on now with this whole Mark Robinson thing and trying to tie Trump to him is that they're trying to upset a state because they know they're down in Pennsylvania. They know they're down there. They know they're down. So they have to flip another state. And so really basically analyzing the behavior of the campaign, this is what they think their best case scenario would actually be, or at least their winning electoral path, which is just completely ridiculous because in Wisconsin is going Republican, I would almost bet that North Carolina is going to go Republican, guys. I mean, there is a scenario where North Carolina and Georgia don't really vote together like that. Like, it could happen. But I think if Wisconsin's going red or Pennsylvania's going red, North Carolina is almost certainly going Republican. I mean, it's almost certainly going red. Maybe there's a year later on. Like, I, like J.D. Vance, if he were to run in 28 against somebody, I actually think the Rust Belt could go Republican and Georgia and Arizona could vote Democrat. Like, I actually think that could happen. And you could see North Carolina vote to the left of the Rust Belt. Like, that could actually happen. And like North Carolina could legitimately decide the election because I have a feeling that the Democrat may be able to beat Vance in Nevada. So the whole election would essentially come down to the wire in, in North Carolina. Like it, it could happen that. Yes. Like at some point it could happen because I suspect Vance would do better with non-college whites by a bit, but do worse with college educated whites and probably wouldn't do as good with African-American or Hispanic voters. So his whole base would just be non-college, which is very prominent in the Rust Belt. And that kind of helped Trump in 2016 win the Rust Belt. So really, guys, overall, Donald Trump. I think he's got the 268 locked up and he just needs one Rust Belt state to win. Kamala needs all three. And right now, according to my website forecast, things are not looking great in the Electoral College for Kamala Harris at all. I mean, she's got a 30, 40% odds in, in Wisconsin, 40% in Pennsylvania, you know, 37 in North Carolina, 30, 40 in Georgia, and 40, not even 39 in Arizona. Like her odds in the swing states are looking real rough. I mean, and just in those four, she's looking hella rough, and that gives Donald Trump 291 in the Electoral College, guys. So if you guys did enjoy this analysis of the Electoral Map, make sure to go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe if you guys want more content just like this, and I will see you guys in the next video.